Hello, all you power sports fanatics. My name is Paul Rohn from Boss Audio Systems Rebel Power Sports Division. As I'm sure you're familiar with the name, Boss Audio Systems was founded in 1987 and is distributed worldwide. The Boss Rebel Power Sports specializes in combining your love of music with the outdoors and is taking the ATV side by side market by storm. We have a scene here at Boss Rebel. Let's get dirty. What's going on, people? It's Paul here again. Uh, today, I'm going to be reviewing the Boss Audio Systems. Boss Rebel BR-1000. Uh, this is a, a 1000 watt 4 channel marine bridgeable uh, power amplifier. If you want to check out our entire line of motorcycle speaker and power amplifier packages, please go to www.bossaudio.com. Quick highlights. It's a 1000 watt 4 channel marine class AB amplifier. Uh, it's got 125 watts RMS in the 4 at 4 ohms or 250 watts max in the 4 at 2 ohms. It's also 500 watts by 2 bridged at 4 ohms. It's also constructed using a special corrosion resistant coating on the printed circuit board. Alright, let's open the box and let's see what's on the inside. I got the box open here. Uh, let's see the first thing it comes to. It looks like uh, some extra cables here. We got uh, two high level inputs. Uh, one for the front, one for the rear. Uh, we also have uh, extensions for the um, outputs on the, on the um, Amplifier, so you can just plug them in and you send them out to where you need to go for the for the speakers that you're going to be powering up. Uh, looks like we also have a, a remote bass knob extension cord to plug in the amp and run it to where we need to to mount the bass knob. Uh, looks like we also have looks like the uh, the bass knob. That's where the cord plugs into, and you can just mount it where we need to, and you can adjust the amp remotely from wherever you're sitting at. Uh, so here's the amplifier. Looks pretty cool. It's a nice flat black. Set the styrofoam off of the side. All right, that has a little good little weight to it. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, we'll get get that in a few minutes. Let's finish what's on the inside here. Uh, let's see. We got the got some installation screws. We got a Boss Audio sticker, and it looks like we got some little little cushion feet pads for the for the screw holders, so that way you won't like mark up your boat or wherever you would be mounting it to. And um, which is pretty nice. We also got a satisfaction guaranteed little card right there. Here's the power, of the the manual that we can kind of read about and kind of how to how to use your amplifier. And on the back here we have the uh, the warranty card for the one year warranty. All right, we'll set that off to the side. Now, uh, in addition to the one year warranty, uh, here's a six year uh, warranty extension. Uh, what this does is this certificate extends the Boss Audio Systems uh, one year original manufacturer's warranty to a total of six years. Uh, the extra five years covers parts and labor. So basically if, if this amp is installed by an authorized Boss Audio Systems dealer, then um, uh, you have a, a six year warranty on the amplifier. Uh, just keep a copy of your receipt in case you need to you know, send it off and within the six years you know, they will take care of the any, any problems you may have with the simplifier. Alright, there's nothing else in the box. I'm going to set this off to the side. And we'll zoom in real close. And I will show you all the features all around the amplifier. Alright, we got it all close up and personal here. Uh, it has a nice flat black look to it. Uh, or like satin black, really. It's, it's real nice. It's uh, has, uh, got nice heat sink. There's no sharp edges or anything. Got a nice chrome Boss Rebel logo with some little red indentions right there. You got BR-1000, 4 channel MOSFET power amplifier and 1000 watts uh, imprinted on the top right there. And I guess we're going to get started. It's going to take some, some measurements and uh, being that this amp is a little bit too long, I have to use my uh, measuring tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from end where the screws are in the end. So measure that. Uh, 32 centimeters if you're needing centimeters or probably 12 and a half inches long so it's 12 and a half inches long from here to the other end over here it's 12 and a half inches uh, for the I guess the, the depth of it I guess from the heat sink to heat sink uh, looks like it's going to be right at seven and a half inches so we got 12 and a half inches away and seven and a half this way and for total height I'm gonna go from here straight down uh, looks like it's about, about a little less than two and a quarter. I'm just kind of rounding it off. Um, 
So anyway, uh, for measurements, we got 12 and a half from here, from end to end, seven and a half from side to side, you know, front to back, I guess. And for height, we got less than two and a quarter. So it's not, it's real compact, small. You can probably put it in a lot of different places. So anyway, I guess while we're looking at this side right here, uh, we have your your powers. This is your ground. Your ground is as close to your chassis as, as possible. Uh, this is your remote turn on. You use this to turn the amp off and on, either with a key or a switch or something. Uh, this is the power wire with a 40 amp fuse built into it. So we got a 40 amp fuse on the power wire, internal wire or remote wire, and ground wire. Uh, over here, these are your uh, speaker outputs. These go to the speakers that you're going to be playing in, like, like uh, you know, some tower speakers or front door speaker stuff. Uh, the whites and grays, that's your front, and the purples and greens is going to be your rear. And you get channel one, channel two, three, and four on here. So this is input for power and output for speakers. All right, let's see. There's nothing here on on this side. So just nice heat sinks. Uh, same thing on this side, on the bottom here, we got a little schematic in case you, uh, of course, I have it upside down, but, um, you know, in case you lose your manual, there's like a, uh, a basic uh, schematic in case you lose your manual, you can look on the bottom of that and, and check it out. All right, now for the business side of the uh, amplifier, let me see if I can zoom in a little closer. All right, we got it zoomed in closer. Uh, this right here, this is for your base knob. Uh, as I said before, you know, the, the base knob comes with, you know, a cord that you can extend it and put it wherever you want. And the base knob has one cord end on it that looks like this. And the other end is uh, like a telephone cord. So the telephone cord plugs into the, um, into the base knob. And this right here, you have to kind of be, be careful. There's like a little indention and you have to make sure you line them up just right. And it just plugs in just like that. That way, in case you ever need to move your amp, all you do is just, just unplug and you're, and you're done. Uh, over here, these are your uh, low-level inputs for all four channels. Uh, low-level inputs means they're be coming from an aftermarket radio that has... Oh, I'll show you right here. Um, these are low-level inputs that, you know, in case you have a, uh, a aftermarket radio with, uh, you know, RCA outputs on the back of it, that's what these will plug into. Now, a lot of times you have like a factory radio or, or a radio that doesn't have, you know, you know, plug-ins that, that look like that. So what, what the, they did was they give you an option for uh, high-level inputs. That's what these are for. And uh, the, one of those first, first cords I showed you, it comes with, you know, two of these. And then what you do is, just like the, the remote base knob, you look right here and you line them up. And you hook these to speakers or outputs that are already there um, originally. And that way, that'll get your sound into the amplifier to power up your your speakers and stuff. And just, just like the bass knob and everything, all you do is just, just unplug it and you're done. You can take it and haul the amp away and leave all your connections right there. So when you bring the amp back, all you do is just plug stuff in you're done. Alright, let's get to the... This little cover right here, this is actually a little rubber cover, it's got the ball symbol on it and everything. And what you do is, it keeps the water, you know, mostly keeps the water out of the amplifier. So what you do is you peel it off of there, and it has all these little rectangles and circles and stuff that go into all these little uh, adjustments and everything, that, and it helps keep the moisture out of the amplifier. So, by looking at it, we got all kinds of controls and everything to adjust. So what we we'll do is we'll start from this side, work our way to the right, and and go down and work left and right as well. So the first one on the top left, uh, this is the filter mode. You got uh, low pass, full range, and, and high pass for the for channels three and four at, on top. And uh, I, guess, I guess I'll go up and down and all, all the way down because it's just you know, for three and four here and two one and two here. So Three and four, you got your your full range, high pass, and low uh, low range. Uh, for your channels one and two, you got you got the same same thing. That way, in case you're playing bass or highs or tweeters, you can adjust the amp uh, accordingly. Uh, up here, we got. Let's see if I can get closer to it. At 50 hertz to 200, 250 hertz. Uh, knob right here. 
for the channels three and four. For channels one and two, you get 50 hertz, also to 250 hertz. Of course, the lower the hertz, the more bass it plays and less highs it plays. So it depends on how you want it to, to play there. If you're playing highs or bass, you can adjust them, you know, just right. Uh, for channels three and four, we got a bass boost. It goes from zero dB to 18 dB. And also, channels one and two have the same adjustment for them as well. So that way you can have a little harder hitting bass. Uh, but a lot of times that might cause distortion, so you have to kind of back off on that a little bit. Uh, the next one over is input level, got minimum and maximum for both uh, 3, 4, and 1, and 2 channels. Uh, it's kind of like a little mini gain on here, you can adjust it. Of course, you can uh, turn it too high, cause distortion, so you have to back off, off a little bit to make it sound just right. Uh, input sensitivity, got low and high. You know, if you're using like high level input, you put on high. If you're using RCA, you put on low. You got you know, 3 and 4, 1 and 2. And also this uh, amp has a, what's called an input mode, which is this last item over here. Uh, you can play it as a two channel amp or a four channel amp. You just switch it back and forth. So being a four channel amp, if you have at least four speakers or more, you can just flick it to four. If you only have two, you can just click it to two and then it'll run that way. And then when you're done, you know, changing all your settings, you take this right here and you actually pop these, uh, this little cover, the rubber cover back into the holes one at a time and you go back through and kind of push them in that way it'll help keep moisture or you know mass amount of water to splashing you know going into the amp so anyway um, it's a really nice amp pretty strong I've, I've got to hear it play and in a boat before and it was really loud alright that was the Boss Audio Systems Boss Rebel BR1000 1000, 1000 watt 4 channel class A V amplifier uh, it has an average price around $249, uh, also with a great six-year warranty, which is really nice if it's installed by an authorized Boss Audio dealer. But anyway, uh, if you have any questions down below about a question of this amp, just hit the comments down below, hit the thumb button, the, the like button, everything. Anyway, this is Paul. I appreciate y'all watching. You have an awesome day, and please subscribe.